I want to do a quick video, show you guys where I'm at on the 65C10. Today I'm kind of buttoning everything up. It should be ready for a test drive. Right now I'm just finishing up changing this fuel line. It has a Holly double pumper. This line was pinched. I ordered one on Amazon. It was cheap enough. It was like, I don't know, under 15 bucks. So I went ahead and changed it. I also changed today, I changed the um, electric fan to run off of that sensor right there because it did have it wired direct to the key on but i'm going to go ahead and let it uh, you know let the temp sensor turn it on and that way i can uh, adjust the timing and try to adjust these this carburetor to where well, well the best that i can and then uh in order to, for that to happen i got to be able to let it get to to a uh, full operating temperature but since the last time that i did a video on it I wanted to show you guys what I did with the exhaust. I had mentioned before that once I lowered it last time, I wasn't able to take it out because uh, the mufflers were sitting on the floor. They were only about two inches off the ground because they were ran down right down the center of the frame. So anyways, I was looking online and a lot of people that bag these trucks, what they do is they run them out the side. They come straight down out the side and along the frame. It sits right at the frame rails. So when they bag them, they can lay all the way down. Uh, I'm not planning on bagging it, but that eliminated all my rubbing issues, that's for sure. So I went ahead and did that. All I had to do was get, let me show you guys, all I had to do was get two 90s. I got a 90 there. These are these are long tube headers also, so that's pretty good. So the long 90 there, then I brought it out the side and did another 90. And just put the exhaust back how it was, but on the outside of the frame. I did attach it to here. It seemed pretty good. We'll see. We'll see how that works out. <clears throat> but so far, it's got plenty of clearance now. I also got these shocks right here. And I like them because they're right height. They're at 10 inches and fully extended. I think they're 12. And I was I like I like that because that's all I have really. Right height, if I need it to be at 10. And then I only have about two inches up and down to travel. As far as the suspension goes, two and a half. So that's, that worked out pretty good. I also ended up having to change the transmission mount because the one that was in here was shot out. And it was, the transmission was a little bit off-centered to the left, so I moved it. You can see right there where I had to drill another hole and move it over. I also changed it to a one-piece drive shaft. You can see there, this drive shaft is from a S10 Blazer 4x4. It was perfect the length wise it was 50 51 and three quarters which is exactly what i needed as you can see that's sitting nice right there there's about three inches of, of a yoke inside the transmission so that worked out great the other one only had about an inch of a yoke grabbing onto it at the at the center piece because it was a two piece also it's kind of funny looking i didn't like it um what else did i do oh i straightened out the shocks they sell a kit because when you when you drop them, the shocks tend to lay forward. So they sell a kit from CPP and you can find them anywhere. But since I added these Monroe load saver shocks, they're actually gonna be helping and not just doing the whole suspension shock type of work. It's gonna be helping with the weight. So I used the original the original hardware. I just cut the rivets and moved it, moved it back. On top, I moved it back about an inch and a half. And then I welded another plate so I could bolt it to the cross member. On the bottom, I took the shock mounts that came with that Jeep Grand Cherokee rear end that I put on here, and I welded them to the other to the bottom ones. Because the ones that they say from CPP they work. Don't get me wrong, but they're kind of kind of light duty. That's kind of hard in here. But see, I. I welded the other one on top and then I braced it, of course, the front and back. You can see that I moved it about another inch forward on the bottom. And what, caused, what, I, what happened was that the shocks were like this. So I moved it back on, on the top. I moved it back on the bottom. I moved it forward, straight them out a little more. So that way they could actually help with the weight. And uh, that's pretty much it right now. Um, Pretty much it right now. I didn't show you guys last time the interior of when I installed the. This is the carpet that was in it. It ain't that great, but it's better than nothing. In other words, here's the seat. It's not ripped, it's just dirty. That's how that worked out with the seat belts. 
they work pretty good but the only thing i don't like about these seat belts is they're kind of short so they work but if you're any bigger than me it's gonna need bigger bigger belts so that's kind of they're, they're cool but i mean i wish they would have been longer maybe i ordered the car ones i don't know i got them on amazon and and it took me like three months to put them in here so so uh i can't return them so anyways they're in there but they work all the mounting hardware as far as all the hard stuff is there you can see how i mounted it there two bolts and then go through the bottom of the middle plate that one i had talked about it before welded a plate back here and it bolts into it so that's pretty cool it also has this, the center belt and um right now i'm waiting for this battery charge because it does have an electric pump on it due to having a mid 90s uh OBS motor which were of course electric so I left the key on while I was trying to get rid of these leaks and it killed the battery so I'm just waiting on that to happen and then I'm gonna bring it down and, and take it for test drive hopefully everything goes good um, and we'll go from there thank you guys for watching